In this video, I'll share with you how seeing life as a practice has the power to dramatically improve your life. But first, I have a joke for you. So picture that everyone is racing to reach a finish line. Some people push others down to do it, some beat themselves up when they get off track, and some fret when they find out they've been on the wrong path all along. Still, others never let themselves rest for fear they won't get there in time or give up far before they do because they've convinced themselves they don't have what it takes to get there. The punchline is, there is no finish line. You don't think that's funny? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> My point is, nothing is ever done. Instead, almost everything in life is a practice. Our careers, our relationships, our beliefs, our identities, they're all practices. In fact, life itself is a practice. And naturally, as practices, these are all things that continue to develop and change over time. Things we get to iterate, play with, tinker with, gradually adapt and shift. And while at first this can sound disheartening and possibly even overwhelming because it means that you'll never be done learning and growing and changing, it's actually the trick to turning a lot of the heavy things in life into things that are light and fun, because it means that we can treat life as a game, which as long as you don't fall into the one major pitfall that I'll share with you at the end of this video, allows you to have three important mindset shifts. To prove my point, I want you to imagine that you're playing a first-person video game for the first time. It's insanely immersive, realistic, and open-ended. The catch? It has no instructions. As such, you have no idea where to start, so for the first few hours, you stay in the same spot, frozen and overwhelmed. All you can do is think of all the possibilities and fear the unknown. But after some time, you start being desensitized to your fear, and it starts being replaced by curiosity. Questions start popping into your head, and naturally, as they do, you set out to answer them and satiate your curiosity. I wonder what will happen if I do this. And what if I do that? Interesting, what happens if I do these things in sequence? What if I reverse that sequence? Because it's a game and you know you can try again, you enjoy the process of learning and experimenting and eventually you see these things as play. You're just trying different things and are intrigued by the results, not taking it personally if something doesn't go the way you expect. By doing this, you may still not know what the rules of the game are or what the point of it is, but now at least you have infinitely more information than you would have if you kept standing in the same spot forever. And you can use that information to ask more questions and run more tests that will eventually help you find even more answers to your questions. If you keep doing this, you'll eventually build a pretty good knowledge base of the game. And eventually, you'll begin noticing patterns and trends, which you can then generalize into rules and laws, which can then inform you as to the ultimate purpose of the game. And since it's a game, if something doesn't work the way you expected it to the first time, you try it again until it either does or you're able to correct your initially incorrect assumptions and understanding. Because it's a game, you're unafraid, and this makes you level up and improve at incredible rates. And because it's a game, it doesn't drain you, but instead, it lights a spark in you, fuels your creativity, and reconnects you to joy and play. Because it's a game, you're fully engaged, fully present, and you and the game almost become one, a synergy developing between you as you react to each other. If you do this, the game will do that, which will then make you do this and make the game do that and on and on and on. It becomes like a dance, an effortless flow of action that takes up so much of your attention that it leaves no space for fear, doubt, and other negative emotions to enter your mental emotional fields. Instead, you're purely driven by intuition, simply doing what feels right, or at least what feels most fun and interesting. So hopefully now you can see how seeing life as a practice, almost to the point of treating it as a game, can dramatically impact your life. 
In case you miss them, the mindset shifts that result in this are 1. That you'll be able to start seeing mistakes, failures, and missteps simply as valuable feedback for the next iteration, rather than as something negative or undesirable. 2. You'll come to understand that iteration and repetition don't have to be boring and tedious. Instead, if you allow yourself to be led by your curiosity, boredom and tedium can be replaced by joy, play, and flow. And 3. You'll start to appreciate that there is no wrong and right, especially when you treat life as a practice, because the concept of a practice implicitly encompasses time in its definition, and given enough time, everything changes, including the things we see as wrong and right. Like my mom always tells me, never say no to an opportunity. It may not lead to where you thought it would, but it'll always lead you somewhere. In this way, something going wrong can simply be the formation of a path to what is right for you. So next time you feel down because you're still not there yet, or because you keep running into things you don't know how to deal with, or that you yourself keep changing and you still don't know where you're headed and or where you are in life, just remind yourself that life is a practice. And that these are all natural consequences of that. That you're feeling or experiencing these things doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. That's just the way life is. We're here to learn and grow. And even if we try to avoid that fact, life will always find a way to make it happen. So you might as well try to enjoy the ride. The only wrong thing to do, and this is the caveat I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is to stay still. Because that implies limiting the ways in which information can reach you. In the game of life, if you don't use it, you lose it. So even if you don't know what you're doing, or you think that what you're doing is wrong, keep moving. Because life is dynamic. It can't stay stagnant, nor can it remain static. So it's key to always keep moving. And equally as important, remind yourself every once in a while to stop taking yourself so seriously. What's the point of taking something that doesn't have an end seriously when we can achieve the same results, if not better, through play and curiosity? Why not let our imagination and our creativity zig and zag and meander rather than trying to find the quickest way from A to B through logic and discipline? Why put all these rules and limitations and structure on something that by nature is undefinable, unlimited, unbound, and unstructured? Why run when we can walk? Why stress when we can revel and rejoice? If you like this video, then you might also like the video link in the end card. It'll help you shift your approach to spirituality so that you can get the most out of it. Besides, it's my most popular video. Before you leave though, comment down below letting me know what you do to continue to learn and grow in life. I want this to be a space where we can all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you have to say. As for right now though, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.